The Adventure of Pedro Penduco was one of my favorite TV shows when I was growing up. This is like Supernatural where you fight mythical creatures while solving problems but much more colorful and kid friendly. I still have the fun memories of the TV series. It's been 17 years since the last time I heard the name of Pedro Penduco. And then about 3 days before Christmas, I learned about the new movie called Pedro Penduco. Essentially, it is a reboot of the character for the modern time. After watching the trailer, I instantly hated the new version of Pedro Penduco. It is not because of the actor, it is because of the character. This is not the first reboot of the character. After all, Pedro Penduco first appeared in 1954, the same year the first Godzilla film was seen by the public. To better understand my point, let's discuss first who is Pedro Penduco. In his numerous incarnations, Pedro Penduco is an ordinary human being with no superpowers. He is, however, resourceful in battling evil forces. He is aided by the magical amulet. In other versions, he is a descendant of a family of legendary heroes, but he is a coward. In the TV version, which I am very familiar with, he is a son of a mortal and a lambda fairy whose adventures begin as he started searching for his lost father. He is then encountered extraordinary creatures unique in the Filipino folklore. But in, in much older versions, he is a poor hygienic person with easy-going personality. Based on the description of Pedro Penduco on the internet, he is an ordinary person with extraordinary abilities with magical amulet to defend extraordinary entities. But in the latest version of the character, he is more like a gifted person with the ability to fight extraordinary entities using his ability and knowledge of witchcraft. Essentially removes the needs of the amulet which provides aid to the user by detecting nearby enemies and functions like infinity gauntlet that utilizes different stones with specific powers but only can be used one power at a time. I am very confused by the big gap between the Pedro Penduco I know and the latest version of the Pedro Penduco which makes me hated watching the trailer. Instead feeling very happy about the new film, it makes me feel like a stranger because I don't feel any familiarity about the character. Now, the question is, who is the latest version of the Pedro Penduco? It is hard to find the right answer to the question but according to all lines research, it is most likely inspired by René Regin Estolatan's Estolatan. version of Pedro Penduco from 2016 which is does not feel right. In this version, Pedro Penduco is a returner from the US. He lives with his adopted father who suddenly died from an accident caused by the supernatural which cannot be explained. After the bad events, he's decided to come to the Philippines to find his biological mother which started his journey. Based on the initial information about the work of Estolantan, or Rene. Pedro Penduco is still follow almost the same relationship with his mother and his initial characteristics like being physically weak is still different from the trailer I watch even though IMB shares the same summary based on the Estolanton work. After more research, I managed to find the movie summary from Penduco thanks to SM for the new movie version. Pedro Penduco is a son of an electronic faith healer earning for a more modern and materialistic life. Pedro runs away to the city to live independently. Unfortunately, he does not find the prosperity he earns for until he is recruited by an underground company where gifted people like Pedro are trained and sent to heal victims in exchange for money. Only based on the description alone, it is a complete makeover of the character Pedro Penduco. It's no longer discovering its strength. It's became more a moral responsibility as a healer. But Pedro Penduco was supposed to be a peacemaker, a warrior, and a protector. Then, why Viva Films makes a ribbon of the Pedro Penduco and why do we have two versions? Well, initially Pedro Penduco was supposed to be played by James Reed because of he was interested in portraying the role during the comic launch of Renes Estolatan's reimagined Pedro Penduco. 
Treb Monteras II was initially hired as a, fi- as a film director, while Estolantan was hired to write a screenplay for the film. But Reed was forced to drop out because of his injury and then replaced by Mateo. Also, Laksamana became both director and the screenwriter of the film, which is supposed to be released around 2020 as an entry for Metro Manila Film Festival, which moved three years later. After the film was shown, I waited for movie reviews because I didn't have any intention of watching the film. As expected, it has mixed reviews, but the majority didn't like the film because of different reasons, which is completely different from my opinion based on the trailer. For example, according to Goldwyn Reviews, the fight scenes are well choreographed, showing tension between characters. The story has potential. There are different levels of difficulty being shown. The plot widens whenever the movie progresses. According to Filbert Die from Letterboxd, the movie is just weak, thematically. Pedro is told that he isn't succeeding in healing people because he aims to hurt that invading sorcerer. But we don't see any manifestation of his change of heart, of what he's doing differently to be more successful. In the end, he's still just bashing people with sticks. In summary, the choreography is excellent, the visuals are great even though the VFX still needs some improvement, and the sound design is weak. But when it comes to the story of the film, it is very confusing and inconsistent which makes it unsatisfying to watch. Also, people always mention that Mateo is not fit for the role because of his lines and looks which make sense from the story's perspective. In conclusion, there's a lot of factors why movies receive bad reviews but based on gathered knowledge about their production. The director is truly at fault for providing a low-value film, especially since he also wrote the film. It feels like an empty shell of what is supposed to be a great movie for the new generation. I hope they think carefully about the story of the film next time, especially if they like to revive other Filipino superheroes.